David Bridges. Uh, I'm a professor emeritus in mathematics at the University of British Columbia. Yeah, I'm Massimiliano Gubinelli and a professor of uh, applied mathematics at the University of Bonn. In physics, the uh, dominant uh, theories uh, for fundamental physics are quantum field theories. And uh, they're not very well understood mathematically. So uh, in the 70s, there was a program to construct actual examples, uh, which uh, succeeded uh, in three dimensions, that's space-time dimensions, and, uh, and then ground to a halt in four dimensions, which is the case of physical interest. And the subject uh, uh, lapsed a little bit. Uh, but then uh, a new approach, uh, which uh, my partner here will explain, came into being. <coughs> yeah, uh, re recently we started to understand much better the difficulty which appear in quantum field theory in other models, so random models, which are stochastic partial differential equations. And, and, and the fact that we were looking at different models gave new ideas somehow on how to approach some of the problems. So in this workshop, what we are trying to do is we are trying to bring together these two universes which somehow face same kind of mathematical difficulties and mathematical problems and try to have a breeding, interbreeding between the two to create uh, new mathematics and to have new approach for old problems or old approach for new problems. Okay. It depends how you how you say. Any, anyway, I think one of the fundamental aspects is to, to really to take two communities to talk each other and this requires time and the right venue which is provided by Newton Institute. Well, uh, it's a bit in the answer to the first question which is that uh, this is uh, something important for physicists and mathematicians to understand. Uh, and uh, when we ran out of ideas for how to do it, uh, uh, the, basically in the 80s, uh, it lapsed. And uh, now we have uh, a new community full of uh, enthusiastic uh, younger scientists uh, uh, with uh, Max uh, in his side of the business. And it's a chance for us old-timers to uh, explain what difficulties were that uh, caused us to uh, run out of steam and for him to tell us uh, something about how we might be able to start it up again. Yeah, I think this is picture very well the situation. I, I feel that here there are a lot of younger, even colleagues, which they are eager to understand things which were understood in the 70s and the 80s, but then it remained somehow there were not continuity in how the material was carried on from one community to the other. And also the two different communities have a different initial goals. So until the end of the 90s, they, they were very much separated. So we, we really are trying to construct some hybrid community which care about the problem of the other. And, uh, and teach young people what was understood uh, and what are the problems which remain to be understood. And this could bring uh, this new life into the world subject, we hope. So uh, we have candidates. Uh, actually, some of them are, in a sense, the original candidates. Uh, for solutions to uh, this constructive problem of quantum field theories. Uh, and um, with this new approach, uh, we in a sense get those candidates much more easily, but we still have the problem of showing that uh, they satisfy the axioms of quantum field theory, which are uh, uh, very close to being uh, almost impossible to satisfy. So uh, we have this problem and uh, that would be the main challenge is to establish these axioms. 
Yes, the, yeah, in, in some way taking into account these constraints, which are the axiom one would need to satisfy to provide uh, like quantum field theory application to technique coming from stochastic PD theory, uh, requires to understand much better what are solution of stochastic PDs, how they long time behavior. Uh, can be controlled and how the statistical properties can be deduced from the local properties of this equation. So this, this is the current challenge for, for us. Well, so this is pure mathematics and uh, uh, historically pure mathematics has long-term applications uh, as well as sometimes short-term applications. Uh, in my case, I don't immediately expect uh, uh, changes to technology or anything like that. Uh, we are ba working out uh, uh, the good logical structure for these quantum field theories, which we believe describe reality. And uh, the problems at the moment are that those are a little bit absent. So calculational methods can sometimes give contradictory or confusing answers. And uh, the, the immediate goal is to try to make uh, something uh, work in a much more systematic manner that way. Yeah, and I also have more long time hope that uh, uh, there, there would be I mean, this interbreeding between different points of view w would, could bring some new idea into clarifying cert certain foundations of, of uh, quantum mechanics, especially um, like super selection sectors or things like, I, I mean, things which f from my point of view are not very well understood mathematically and so could provide some maybe new insight into intellectual understanding of uh, what is quantum field theory or quantum mechanics in general. Well, uh, the uh, rough path theory of our uh, title up there on the blackboard uh, already has had uh, applications to subjects such as pattern recognition and uh, handwriting recognition and so on. Uh, that came about because uh, Terry Lyons, who uh, had some of the important initial ideas, uh, found good ways of uh, encoding uh, random paths in a smaller amount of information that was formerly being used. So this is a kind of spin-off from uh, uh, the general uh, problems that uh, we are looking at right now, that's already happened. Yes, essentially what we are trying to do now is to extend this initial understanding to like space-time extended random object. And this one could imagine would bring also some insight on how to use it, this uh, efficient description to have some new statistical method for this object.